When I told Kevin, I found out from my surrogate, shows, you know, showed me the little stick that we were pregnant. So I raced down to Kevin. He was in the gym. And I was like, hi, we're pregnant. And he did what I did on Howard Stern. When he proposed to me, I jumped away from him and ran. He did the same thing. He ran away from me. I'm coming to you with this special episode since the cat's out of the bag. Athena is here, and I'm so excited that we got to share her with you guys uh, recently on the cover of Us Magazine. And so shout out to Andrea and Maria at Us for a beautiful layout. I'm joined by my husband, Kevin Undergaro. Hello, honey. Hello, hello. Thank you for being here. I don't hear you in my ear, but I'm hoping people do hear you. Well, I am here, and I hear myself so oh, I'm sure other people can hear me well now I can hear you too okay um, we are gonna answer all your questions live today um, tell you all about motherhood and fatherhood and the whole situation and everything that's gone on I have some video to share from that day of her delivery um, I could have been a little bit more organized about this I kind of threw it last minute so my apologies to Natasha in the booth who's feverishly trying to put them all together I was like oh I just saw these videos we should use these <laughs> but uh, you know we were in Milwaukee for almost two weeks because they had told us she was tracking 11 days early her due date was June 22nd and so I was like oh my gosh what if she comes on my birthday June 8th so we like made sure we got home from Greece early enough so that we could do the turnaround and so we spent a lot of time in Milwaukee which was fun it was amazing. It was so fun. Yeah. And the the buildup was great. And I kept saying, trust the process. Yeah. So I knew she wasn't coming early. It was uh, it was pretty amazing. Not only did she not come early, she came a day late. But um, we're going to get to all those details and your questions. But first, I want to let you guys know, obviously, what we're here to do every single day. We're here to get better in all areas of life. But we are very heavily focused on health and wellness. So thank you for being on this heel journey with us. We are heel squads. So we're doing it together because it is a lot easier to get better together than to do it alone. I always tell people, listen to the show, make it your accountability partner. Because if you don't have friends who are into this lifestyle of trying to get better and trying to do better, then you know, you're kind of all alone out there and it's hard but if you're listening to this show every day you're going to hear us on our journeys and we're all on the journey together it's a lot easier so um we have some amazing all-star episodes that uh kevin and natasha have been curating so that you guys can get the best of the best experts all in one episode i'm really really loving them i hope you guys are too and if you're new to the show and you haven't heard them before take a listen we're categorizing them specifically to different issues, whether it's gut or reproductive or mental health. Um, so you can get the most advice and the best advice all in one episode. So that's that. Um, if you don't know, Macy's is a huge supporter of our show and we're so grateful to them. Uh, I used to work for them back in the day as a fragrance spritzer, so I have an affinity for them and I've been a longtime shopper, but I have my own curated link of my favorite things at Macy's. So go to macy's.com backslash heel squad. I have new baby stuff that I've been using up there, by the way. So I have my favorite sunscreen, which I went there this morning and ordered more of the Kula organic sunscreen because it's 106 here in LA and it's been a lot so uh, a little sunscreen for those super super hot sunny days when we're sitting by the pool and there's so much more there fashion and um, baby stuff like I said all the things that I'm using and loving right now or some of them not all of them and then also wanted to mention our baby merch so if you saw us magazine you would see Athena wearing her little heel squad onesie uh, I thought that would be a really cute thing for her to be in the heel squad and I really like the idea of from go she's gonna know that her health is her number one priority so we made up a bunch of shirts if you guys want to get them for your favorite little baby um, we did them in pink blue and white and they either say health is my number one priority or I'm the CEO of my health because I think it's really important for us to try to um, 
in in what's the word implant no um ingrain ingrain this into their their minds at an early age and to let them know that it isn't just about achieving in this world and it isn't about just you know making lots of money or being popular although it's very important but it is very important yes no um you know your health is your number one thing so um along with getting likes I can't tell if everybody's seeing them right now, but um, pink, blue, white, you can go to mariamanunos.com and check those out or go to the link in my Instagram and you can order uh, a little gift for somebody. And I think it's like a nice reminder for us as parents to to teach them everything that they need to know about health and how important it is for them to be um, the CEO of their health. And this is just first edition because we're thinking second edition would be you know, we would say have statements. Popularity is number one. All about the likes. All about the likes. Yeah. I there might be that. <laughs> right. Oh, we also made a cute little embroidered bib that's got the lemon logo on it. It's so cute. So um, anyhow, we have all of that for you there. Um, and then, oh, one of the other things. So if you listen to the show, you probably have heard me say that um, I'm very picky about the sponsors that come in and the advertisers because it's got to be stuff that I love, that I use, that I'm behind. So Rosetta Stone is one of our newest uh, supporters. And I have to say it's been so cool. I've been doing my Rosetta Stone to improve my Greek. And sometimes it's funny, like it can be elementary, like they're telling me, you know, the days. I'm like, I know how to say Viftera, Triti, Tetarti, but it's it's just great to when you get to places where you are learning new words or there are certain words I couldn't say right and they have the pronunciation and the grammar. So I'm improving my Greek. You have not really followed through on learning your Greek yet, but you've been very busy, man. The Eastern languages are tough on me. <laughs> no, I mean right. that the, uh, when you go Arabic, Russian, So then why don't Greek, you do it and learn your Spanish better? Chinese, Japanese. You could be so much better. I, I was getting really good at my Spanish. Yeah. I, so, can, I can get right back to it. Yeah. So anyhow, um, just a shout out for anybody who is thinking about living abroad or wants to pick up another language. It really is super easy. No, so. I'm actually good. Well... It what? ties back to Athena. Yeah. I'm a, a believer that this next gen is going to be much more global than we are. And I think, uh, yeah, it's very important to be able to have another language. So we're going to be, we're be an trilingual family. in this family. Yep. And we want to raise her that way. And so I so do it an, with it's her. It's a really important tool. Yeah. And I do it with her. I don't know if you've noticed, but I, I yeah. have her in my lap and I'm doing the Greek lessons with her because I want her to learn too. So anyhow, just a little, a little of that for you guys. Um, I want to get into some of the questions you guys had. And one of the first ones was how has becoming a mother changed you? Uh, I kind of want Kevin to answer that in a funny way because he just keeps seeing so much that makes me laugh. Um, and he's been so great. You've been amazing. He's like, just be a mom. Don't worry about anything else. So Natasha and Kevin have been working really hard. And P.S. Our Instagram is insane. It looks so good. It's never looked better. And the content's never been better. So kudos to you guys. The Natty and Kev show. Yeah, the Natty and Kev show has been crushing. So maybe it's just you guys don't need me. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> We're holding the... Like I I'm the canary say. in the coal mine. I see no, the things here yeah. and there. And I'm like, hey, maybe uh, we need to do this. Listen, so. you a team can only go so far. Patriots can, could only go so far without Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. You know, like you can hold the fort down. We say like, remember Garoppolo? True. They came in. They only had to win a couple of games without Tom. And then mm -hmm. they won the Super Bowl. So we just... Yeah. All we have to do is play 500 ball, which we're we're winning. But, you know... To go all the way, we need you. Okay. Yeah, thank star. You. So. Okay, so how has motherhood changed me? I'm curious. Much lighter. Much lighter. Much happier. Um, a, a, a sense of completion, I feel, in you. Um, I want to be cautious when I say it because it isn't for everyone. You know what I mean? I don't want... There's a lot of people that aren't, can't be moms or mm -hmm. aren't moms. And I think in our society, we put a lot of pressure on them to yep. become them. And maybe... That's not their journey or for them. But I think for you it was. And um, I think it's great and it's come at the right time. But yes, I feel like lighter, more joyful, happy. That's how I feel. Yeah. I and feel need to stay there. On top of the world. 
I don't think the only other time I felt this good was when I started Dr. Joe Dispenza's meditations and I was just floating. I remember being in the kitchen and being like, honey, I can lift a car with my joy. I'm so happy. And I didn't know that happiness existed. And so I did have that light feeling with that too. Um, and then, you know, life hit with the tumors and it was really hard. I'm just getting back into my meditation program again now, but at the same time, I'm just so there already with Athena. And, you know, one of the other questions there is, you know, have there been any big surprises? I think the biggest surprise has been how natural it feels and how normal it feels and how, even though it's been such a major life change, it isn't in a way like it feels like we've been together forever. It feels like this was just like, okay, yeah, this is totally normal. Not like, oh my gosh, this is totally foreign. And, you know, it just, it all just fit so easily and perfectly. So I feel that, but then I also am surprised um, that I really want to do all those little things. You know, I do have help. I have a nurse helping me. It was one of the, the gifts that uh, I think I gave myself and we made sure I had because of everything. Yeah, I'm still healing from surgeries and all I that mean, stuff. months out of... Yeah. yeah. So I think, you know, I think I would have been like, my my thought would have been that I wouldn't have thought I needed to change diapers or do any of that stuff. I fight to change the diapers. I like race. I make sure if I'm in the bathroom and I know it's time for her to eat, I'm racing to go feed her and make sure I get to do every feeding I can. Um, last night, well, the night before was funny. So the night before Kevin and I went to see Barbie. By the way, I really think everybody should see this movie and already everybody has. Uh it was so cool. It was such a good movie and so sweet. And I bawled my eyes out at the end. Natasha, have you seen it yet? Not yet, but did I you, do want to see it. Did you play with Barbies? I did play with Barbies. Oh, they were God. a big part of my life. You're gonna I had cry. two cousins that were similar age to me and we grew up like sisters and all we did was play Barbie. Did you ever cut their hair and yeah. screw them all up and yeah. stuff? And yeah, color them. And, and then my cousin actually had um, her mother's Barbie, which was the very first Barbie ever made. Oh, wow. So I wish I still had one. Natasha, don't. don't be shy. I want to see your face. So does everyone else. Yeah, I got a hand-me-down Barbie house for my cousin. She had the big yellow house. It was like in three parts. And then I got a Barbie Corvette. And I remember being so annoyed at the remote control cord being so short that I cut it. <laughs> but um, I, I loved playing with my Barbies. But the movie was so great. We come home. We were like racing home. And uh, our baby nurse, Catherine, was like, you know, she doesn't want to sleep. She's very sturdy. So I said, let me let me try. So I grab her and I go into my office where it's really dark. And at first her eyes are wide open. And I started doing literally every prayer I know in Greek, but whispering it to her in her ear. So I did the the you know, Lord's Prayer. I did the, the creed in Greek. Then I did it in English. I kept doing all these prayers. Then I did her nightly prayer that I do with her that I taught her that my mom taught me when I was a little girl and then finally she fell asleep and I felt like yes I'm good at this so I brought her back in and I delivered her to the baby nurse and I was like yes and then last night she was doing the same thing she's a really good baby she doesn't really cry unless she's hungry or has you know soiled her diaper um and so she wasn't you know settling so I'm trying to do the same thing and it's not working so I go, okay, it's time for Papu. So I go down to Papu's room. I put her in his arms and she cried for like a second and then just stared at him like he was God, like she always does. And and then just her arms went over her chest like this and then she just went to sleep with her mouth open. Her little birdie mouth, I call it. It was the cutest thing. And then my dad literally says to me, you can take her now. She's she's asleep. <laughs> My dad's become like the baby whisperer slash expert in the house. Um, so, yeah, I'm I'm surprised because I don't know. I I just didn't know. I didn't know what I was going to be like. Uh, all of my friends and family have said they've known because they see how we are with our dogs, and we're very nurturing and maternal and loving with them. 
Uh, another thing that surprised me is that a lot of people said that you're going to look at your dogs and be like, they're nothing or not care about them anymore. I love them just as much as her, I think. I'm sure there's a slight difference, but I really don't feel a big difference when I say I love you to her and I love you to them. I love them so much. There is concern. Yes. Because Bobo went from the baby of the family. Mm-hmm. Now he's a middle child. Yes. And let's be honest, Bobo has not... He loves the baby. Loves the baby. Um, but it, it's it's freaked him out a little bit to go to middle child status. I think you're making all of that up. I am head. not making that up. Honey, Max is, is embracing being the protector, being the oldest. Yes, he is. And no, Bobo now follows... You know everyone else around the house. He d- you come on, you know that. Yeah. He didn't know. He doesn't know. Didn't so know his we've place been for a minute. Him to coffee in the morning. Yeah, so we do us. it. You know, like you would do with your fur. You know, the the yeah. baby that now is no longer the baby. You have to. Yeah. So yeah, we've been taking him <laughs> on true, errands. Actually. Yeah. We haven't really had time to talk about it. We're making up for it. Well, you know, it's important. So what surprised you uh, about this whole process? Nothing. Nothing. Because I have a crystal brain. Okay, so. You are just... I knew this would complete you. I knew this would be exciting for you. I knew this would be exciting for family. I knew your dad would be over the moon. And I told you, because he, <laughs> he was like, I'm not coming to LA. I'm not coming to California anymore. With mom being gone, it was too depressing for him to go to their room. All of it. I'm done. I'm Connecticut. I'm with my Greeks. And I'm with my garden. And you come visit me. I go, okay, Maria, watch this. <laughs> go yeah. just watch what the baby are comes. You, do you have any surprises with you? Are you surprised? Well, my the one thing I didn't see is I thought I was going to be, I was. You were going to be the mom. I thought I was going to be Mr. Mom. Mm-hmm. That's been the surprising part. Life got in the way with your illness. And then, you know, all of a sudden just I had to get back out into the game and uh, be, be the provider. Um, and even though it's often been said, to be the man, you have to beat the man. I didn't have to really beat the man. I just became the man. Okay. But that's been, that was, I didn't see that coming. I thought I would be the one scheduling the feeding, the this, the that, the poop, the diapers, the sleep patterns, and and um, that's been you. And so yeah. it's been great. And I will say, um, you know, one thing I will say, a lot of people reached out, it's funny, early on, people were going at my mom. Like he's, he's so old. Um, Before we had her. Yes. And my mom though, now with the baby. Yeah. She was like, don't do it. Yeah. Cause she just was like, it's not worth it. Just enjoy your life. <laughs> but then. I know. And she would scare me because I'm like, oh gosh, like, are we making a mistake? Like, is life going to get hard and in, in a not good way? Oh my God. It's the best thing that ever we, happened. Well, because we've done so many other things that we got that out of our system. Yeah. Now we want cupcake day. <laughs> we want, yeah. You know, and so my mom is like, oh my goodness, Kevin, everyone was so, people were so wrong. Mm-hmm. Like you're so young to be doing this. This is the perfect age. You're calm. The one thing I will say though, for because I then I've had a lot of people reach out that have said you've inspired them, Maria, because you know, they, it just hasn't lined, life hasn't lined up yeah. for them yet. And um, I'm just saying to people that we're also having older parents reach, come back to us and say, I wish I had waited. Yeah. I wish I waited to be older because I would have been calmer. I would have had more wisdom. I would have had more appreciation for those moments. It all went by so fast. I'm so busy working and yeah. trying to stay ahead. So is a trade off. But the one thing I'll say that, I've been big on is okay because we are older we need every advantage we can get so every convenience to help us mm-hmm. you, you know and it does it takes a village as they say but all the love we have from grandma Violetta to your dad to us and you know all of her surrogate aunts and uncles mm-hmm. um, yeah I just take none of that for granted and i think it's really important that you know she has that and i don't know it's all yeah come together but it, but what, the first day we were trying to pack we tried to go out in one of our cars it was a very hot day <laughs> and it worked out but i said okay that's it now monday dad's going to buy a minivan yep. i'm not dealing with this 
So we did go and get our, it's not yeah. arrived yet. Yeah. Very excited about the new Cadillac and yeah. minivans to come in. But it's all about convenience because I don't want to be, I don't want anything to be inconvenient for us because we're going to have enough obstacles in just raising her. So mm -hmm. I'd like to clear out all that stuff and especially at our age. I'm trying to clear out all the obstacles yeah. in our way. But the surprise has been that I've been on the other end. I thought yeah. I would be in your shoes. The best moment I think in a minute has been, was this morning. So this morning she turned five weeks old officially. And uh, every morning we are really very um, big believers in the circadian rhythm. You've probably heard it on the show before and how important it is for your health and your hormones. So we are up before the sun rises so that we can catch the sunrise and then so kevin and i go out there with the dogs and then within a few minutes athena wakes up and i go up and i get her and i bring her out so this morning i brought her out and kevin um kevin sees her and she literally changes every day like we keep like looking and i'm like oh my god yesterday everyone was like her eyes are like more blue like her eyes are lightning they were dark gray blue or something, and now they're actually becoming a little bit blue. I don't know where these blue eyes came from, guys, but I don't know if they're going to stay because they say sometimes it takes a couple of months for their eye color to be what it's going to be. But her face is filling out and her body's filling out. And Kevin goes, oh, my God, she's no longer alien, baby. <laughs> and his joy, your joy was like insane. You were exploding this morning looking at her. Yeah. I want, she's getting more connected. Yeah, you know, Kevin first, started cheering. He was like, yes. Because well, all the dads say that it's better with later. Like we're. From so, what I'm hearing, because I'm talking yeah. to other dads and I'm asking them, you know, what. Yes, yeah, like, so you, you know, don't have guilt. Give it a few months, three months, a year. Then, you know, when they become more connected, you respond. But isn't, the, then we hear all those theories that the, the, the baby comes out looking like the dad initially so that you bond to make you bond yeah. because they know and she's been your twin yeah she's been your twin um i did um i did love seeing that this morning though it was so fun and yeah i mean i see her and i'm like oh my gosh she's getting so big and i play back her birth video all the time with friends because i'm like oh my god this was like the greatest moment it was so crazy um so yeah i think those are kind of the big headline surprises and just so grateful that we have a good baby she's so easy god thank you um and having help in that transition was so so important so if i could give anybody advice it's <laughs> ask for less stuff because you really need less than you think um, and ask for baby nurse money <laughs> so you can have a baby nurse even for the first three days so you well, can catch me, can your I breath. Well, let me say something to a lot of younger parents. Mm -hmm. I have three um, younger parents that I'm friends with that are having had children around the same time Athena came, and the in-laws were willing to move in and stay with them, and they were like, no. You know, because they want, I get it, they want their time, and I don't know if it's the husband or whatever, yeah. But I will say, the, at least the in those I knew were ready to go to bat and be the night nurse. They were ready. Like, they'll, you know, and so I just, if you can get the help, I think, the help. take it. Yeah. Well, Kelly Rippa, I just it. did her podcast, and she was telling me when they had their kids, they were in, or at least their first, they were in a two-bedroom apartment in New York. So imagine how small. And her in-laws came to live in there with them and help them. And it just reminded me of us because that's we would do the same thing and how amazing it was and how helpful. So, um, yeah, you you need you need the help. It's yeah, really well, nice. No, listen, God bless the people who do it without it and all of our parents who did it without it and the women who do it without it today and men. Um, but if you can, I'm saying if you can get the help, I think it's really important. Mm -hmm. And again, we're at a certain age. So that was our trade-off. But at a certain age, we've been able to have more means to be able to have that help. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. But I think if you can get the help, take it. Yeah, ask for that. And then you get the registry. You don't need all that other stuff. <laughs> Trust me. I, I look now and I'm like, okay, we needed, you know, obviously you need your nursery. You need what you need. Yeah, that there. was all you. And then 
um, wherever you're going to spend the most time, like your kitchen to have a changing table and another like, like, you know, bassinet or crib or something, diapers, bottles and wipes really like that was it. And the bottle warmer and the, well, the wipe warmer. Yeah. The warmer. Yeah. For the wipes. Yeah. Oh, the wipe warmer has been nice. Yeah. Yeah. Too. Well, I'm just, trying, I'm thinking of all, cause yeah, all I, ke- all I hear from the other moms we've talked to is, is, and their moms have said, oh my goodness, there's so many great new things out there that make the process so much easier. Yeah. And it's, they're not that pricey. It's interesting because it's a short shelf life because the babies grow so fast, mm-hmm. but at the same time, any of that stuff, again, you start taking away the inconveniences. Yeah. And then you, there's just less stress on you and you don't want to put that yeah. stress onto the baby. And then I can't say enough about that doona. So the doona is um, a carrier stroller all in one. So we have the base in the car. So we like collapse it, lock her in, uncollapse it, go off. It's been so great. So I'm. Um, did you do um, with Dylan, Natasha, did you do the doona? I did not do the doona. It, it probably the, wasn't even around. The doona came out like very, very soon after Dylan was born. I remember going to South Africa to see, we took Dylan when he was four weeks old to see family. And my cousin in South Africa has the largest um, baby community like on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. And she was just gifted it because they were coming out uh, to yeah. try it out. So no, I didn't. I had a thing called the Orbit. They don't make it anymore. Best stroller in the whole world. Oh, I loved wow. it. It spins around, so you never have to pick the baby up. You can just turn it around. Oh, nice. Yeah. It was uh-huh. Super easy. Hence Orbit. <laughs> um, okay. Have and so, been- you know, it's just funny. Someone I'm looking at Instagram mentioned yeah. that they mentioned they raised their daughter all on their own. They wouldn't change anything. And I think I know so many parents who've done that. Yeah. I just give you so much credit. But the experience is different for everyone, you know? Yeah. Well, no. Yeah. Raising them on your own is amazing. But if you just went through a C-section or anything like that, yeah. Um, it's nice to have a little bit of help in the beginning to get you, you know, give you that break so you can catch your breath. Cause I remember I didn't give birth <laughs> and that first night, the two of us, we were like dying. Yeah. We were like, wait, what, what do we do? We were exhausted. <laughs> we didn't know what to do. Thank God for those nurses. Yeah. So then you travel and then you're more exhausted. And I was like, oh my gosh. So um, you know, first couple nights would be nice for people. I wish it was covered yeah. by insurance for people. I really do. I think that's something I wish we would work on Ugh, for people. I know. You know, even just to ed- help educate people on the, you know, mm-hmm. they just kind of send you home and figure it out. And obviously we all do. But yeah, it's made me really concerned because I know other cultures do that. Yeah. Right? They have. Oh, yeah. But I yeah. also... I also remember when Dylan was born, no one told me what it was going to be like off, like what, how my body was going to feel after the birth. Mm. And I was like, oh my God, if I had have known it was going to be this sore and this uncomfortable, maybe I wouldn't have done it. Wow. And you know, you're still dealing with all of those things. So if you're able to have the help, I think it's really awesome. Yeah. Our surrogate was at a f- strawberry festival the next day. Such a chance. Viking. <laughs> She's amazing. I'm like, how? I couldn't go and I didn't even give birth. Anyway. Um, okay. Do we have any other questions that I should be paying attention to on social right now that we should go to? Um, all the thing, all the statements are coming through. Just wishing you guys well. They are, people are just so excited for you. Thanks, and they're guys. just sending love. They want you the blessings, all the best. Um it's just, yeah, no one's really asking questions. They're just sending so much love no, to you. We have felt so, so much we love. Got some questions that people, you know, were able to give their questions beforehand. Yeah, we're so grateful for all the love. We feel it. It's been amazing. Uh, let's see. Someone's suggesting a good detailed uh, album for her baby moments. So, Maria, you've been, I know Natasha turned you on to some app, yeah. right? So the, oh, ooh. actually, I got to tell our. What's it um, called? Seconds? No. One second every day. Is that what it is? Nat, what is it? Um, yeah, yeah it's one tell. second every day. Um, so, one second every day is an app. Um, one second every day app. So, you basically take photos. It's such an easy process, and you can do it for other things too. It doesn't have to be, it could be your own life. But you, there's like a little ad sign, and it'll give you the pictures from that day. You can pick which ones you like, you put them in, and it just compiles this life video. So Athena has her whole five weeks of life, every mo- moment, every milestone, all in there, thanks to Natasha showing this to me. 
And if you forget for a couple of days, it doesn't matter. You go back in and they have all the pictures stored there. It's so easy. And you just grab the ones you want to put in there. And it's so cool. And then we have a physical album <clears throat> as well that you've been writing in. I've been writing in Not Enough. But I think it's so important to do that. And I need to do it more. Just yeah. talking about the moments and you know, her with your dad, her with you, yeah. the reactions, the first smile. Yeah. What her personality is like. Yeah, because just, just this week, the smiles really came where you're looking at her and she's looking you dead in the eyes and she just starts getting so exuberant and I just die and I melt. Um, sometimes she's farting when she does it, but <laughs> when people... Catherine will be like, she's farting. And I'm like, way oh. to burst my bubble, Catherine. <laughs> um, someone was asking where about the name. Oh, Athena. So funny enough, uh, and I think, do we share that video um, Nat, or we never shared the video of me telling Kevin about the baby. We haven't shared the video yet. We will be sharing the video on Monday. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, Monday? Yeah. Why was it Monday? I don't remember. We will... Okay, whatever. Um, so we, um, when I told Kevin, I found out from my surrogate shows, you know, showed me the little stick that we were pregnant. So I raced down to Kevin. He was in the gym and I was like, hi, we're pregnant. And he did what I did on Howard Stern when he proposed to me. I jumped away from him and ran. He did the same thing. He ran away from me. And at some point I was like, um, I think you're supposed to hug me now. <laughs> like he just was in such shock. Um, and so I forget the whole point of that story. Why was I telling you? We were talking about oh, the, the name. name. So in that video, I, I talked about her as Athena. Now, it's no surprise we had been talking about names for years and years and years, but in that specific video, I had named her Athena. And then we got away from that name and we had another name we were obsessed with. And then in the hospital, it was the whole two days we were there trying to figure out her name. We were so confused because everyone's like, you'll know when you see Came her. Came down on the wire. And we didn't. We didn't think, oh, any of the names that we love, and even it could have been Fruit, Fruit Loop, like nothing... You didn't look at her and say, oh, I know your name. That feeling never happened. But we finally came to, it's really Kevin. Kevin's really good names. He's like Athena Alexandra. So Athena, what's cool, is the goddess of wisdom and war and spirituality and inspiration. And uh, she was very fair, I think, and just from what I read. And then Alexandra was the defender of humankind. I was like, oh my gosh, we just anointed a warrior. And the fact that she was born in call, which means she was born in her embryonic sac, which is very, very, very rare. Those babies are regarded as special and visionaries that see things. And so I was like, oh, wow. And I joked about this on Live with Kelly. I was like, maybe she's come to save us. We need some help in this world. Um, but funny enough, one of my favorite gifts we've gotten was from our friend Tamar. She gave us an astrology chart reading for baby Athena. So Mandy Ingber, she's going to be on the show at some point because we were just so fascinated by the process. Uh, and I've done astrology charts before and I loved it. I felt like I knew myself better or I understood myself better or now I had permission to kind of embrace certain parts of myself that maybe I wasn't sure about because I was like, oh, well, it's written in the stars and, and I already knew that. So now I get it. I get it about myself. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So... Athena's chart was so amazing and she's like this child has so much luck in her chart so much abundance which I have we have very similar charts except hers is even better um, and she has her purpose in this world it's a spiritual purpose and like she's like I keep feeling like the word guru like just she has some big spiritual purpose here um, she's going to be big and bold. Very and she's popular. Gonna stand up for herself, which I was so proud of. Get a because... lot of likes. What? No, honey, that was not part no, of the chart. I, I'm just saying. I, um, different chart. And, and she was going to stand up for herself, but she was also going to be very grounded and earthy. Her Basically, her chart was she's like a super well-rounded you know, person who's going to be very, very successful. And Not so much driven by money. Yeah. More about purpose. Purpose. And um, I mean, again, according to this science, mm -hmm. and doesn't was, need siblings, which was interesting. Could yeah. have them, but didn't need them. So that was a. And it was also interesting because our baby nurse is in the room. I'm like, everybody, you should listen because it should be, it'll be cool. 
So she said, she just, she needs a lot of love. And I looked at the nurse and I started dying because she calls me the kissy, kissy mama. She goes, oh no, here comes kissy, kissy mama. Cause I'm obsessed with kissing her. And I just, I smother her all day. And, uh, and so I was like, see, see, the astrologer said, I have to give her lots of love. I must be not giving her enough. I got to give her even more. Um, and and she said she's going to be super confident, but there'll be something she's not confident in, but she might mask it. And I was like, oh, interesting. So, um, and there was something else that she said, and I was like, okay, now that we know, oh, she's going to like things in an order. Um, and so I said, maybe knowing that we'll be working with her to give her a little bit more, um, space to not need order all the time so that she's you know not just that one thing there she can have uh, the ability to expand there so you know I don't know to me that means a little bit of perfectionism maybe so I was like okay maybe we'll mismatch her socks and maybe we'll show her that it's okay to you know we have to teach her those things so that she's not stuck in that Um, and she can be a little more well-rounded there but uh, it was really cool. I thought if you want to get somebody a gift, I think that's the coolest gift. If people are down with that kind of thing, some people don't like this stuff. It was interesting too. I mean, again, I don't know how they know this stuff, but it was like she will come into her appearance by twelve at twelve or yeah. something like that, and then and she's in a peak at five. Her, I think it was Venus or whatever. At five years old, she's something major, amazing is going to happen. And she's like, maybe she'll be on a stage or something. I go, hell no. She's not going to be on stage. I'm not doing that. So, yeah. And they said she'll come into her beauty. She's going to be beautiful. She's going to come into her beauty at 12. And I'm just concerned, again, going back to the age thing, I'm concerned. I want to make sure, you know, she has family around her. And, and the, according to the chart, she's never going to be at a loss for that. Oh, yeah. She's never going to be at a she's loss for a lot friends. Of, a lot of love and, around her. Yeah. So. Which I'm creating my committee for her. Yes, this, of, is, a good, this is a good note, too. Yeah, I'm, commi- I'm creating, and they're going to have certificates, and they're going to have to accept of course, the the job. But Marie, can you describe a little bit what the committee is so people can understand? That's what I'm doing now. So the committee is basically um, my friends that I love and respect, that I go to for advice, that I think um, you know are amazing. And so I'm creating little certificates for all of them, and they have to accept the position of being her surrogate aunt and uncle or surrogate. Um, godparents, whatever the term I'm going to come up with. I can't, I might have done it already and written it down in my note folder where I put all their names, but she's going to have all of them in her life where she can call them at any time and they will be there for her. And so if something was to ever happen to Kevin and I or whatever, or even if she didn't want to go to us, there'll be those people that I know I can trust that she could go to. We go to the board. Of course, we're going to teach her to come to us for everything and anything, but she's going to have her board, her family board, and I'm really excited about it. So I've, I've made my list, and um, and so we have some really amazing people in our lives that I think will be really influential in hers and really helpful in hers. I mean, look at me. like In my toughest moments, I reached out to Gabby Bernstein and said, I need help. And I've never done that, but those there were two moments in the last few years when my mom was dying and whatever, and she was like, I got you. You're not doing the show. I got it. Me and Kev will handle it. Um, she got me with different healers, and she was all over me. And just, you know, the people that just answer the call, yeah. and, and they know how to do things, and they know how to execute. And GSD. They know they love you enough to be able to help you in your your weak moments. So that's that's what I'm doing for her. But back to the astrology chart, great gift idea. So I've already given it to my friend who just had a baby as well, and she's like, "That's so cool." I was like, "I could send you bunches, you know, a bunch of clothes and stuff." But you know, with with by the way, I do want to go through baby gifts, do's and don'ts. Do not give teddy bears and stuffed animals. By the time you give it, there's already fifty thousand others. So I have a bin of stuffed animals I'm going to donate you know there's so many kids that don't have them like so um and always buy clothes way bigger so do not buy newborn because chances are they're going to be in pjs and um and swaddles 
you know, most of the time anyway, and you just need a few and you're just recycling and washing them. Um, but buy things like way out four months old five months old so that they have stuff to look forward to and think about the weather in four or five months so you don't want to buy a four-month-old dress when in four months it's going to be winter and they're not going to wear it Uh uh-huh just thought about that one recently Mm -hmm. as i was planning ahead i got this whole you know slew of things i'm like oh she's not going to be able to wear that it's going to be winter in connecticut and you know things like that but um no stuffed animals friends please don't People don't need lots of stuffed animals. Um, And yeah. And I think baby nurse time, the astrology chart, those were really cool gifts that I've, I've seen as of late. Yeah. It's interesting. You you guess you could ask everyone. And picture frames, picture frames Uh, for people because you want to frame all these pictures of your baby. Do you? Right now I need picture frames. I do. It's only so much wall. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? Because we're going to do that here on this wall. We're going to put some, I don't, some I'm frames. Gonna, no, I'm going to say no on the picture frames. Why? Because they're not going to be matching frames. So you know that gets odd. Yeah, and but you sometimes don't know it's if, cool tin mismatch. Yeah, and most of the time it's not. So when okay. it's chromes and woods and brasses and different things like that, I think maybe a gift certificate to one of those services today that print up Oh yeah! All the photos in a certain collage. Great idea. You know, like that would be great. And I th- and I really think that you know I never thought of this, but maybe there's a fund that you can get for like the baby nurse for a week. That, That's what I was saying that, earlier. Yeah, like but have people contribute to yes. something officially? Yeah, because that will go so much further. So much further. People that will help, help a lot. Yeah, to get a break, to be able to go out to dinner with your husband and whatever. Just to get a break. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm going to do, I, I, we, I think we worked with a, a sponsor back in the day that, um, did this, but you can give them a bunch of your pictures and then they create a, a frame collage wall. So I'm going to do a whole frame collage wall of her birth and our wedding. I still don't have one wedding picture up of ours, not one. So I'm very behind on the photos and maternity leave has been really great because I'm getting so much done. Our trash compactor never worked. We've had it for eight years. We <laughs> bought it brand new and it's never worked. And we tried, my mom tried, Violetta tried. Apparently this little plunger piece was missing. So guess who's got the plunger piece? Guess whose trash compactor is gonna start working now? I've been- Yours is. I've been handling the little Go ins girl, and outs. you own it. I, Hashtag queen, yeah. hashtag icon. I really love being on maternity leave. I love you on leave too. So. Um, let's see. Can you share the most heartwarming mom- moment between you and your baby girl that you cherish the most? Ooh, that's a tough question because I cherish every single moment. Um, I really love her bath time. Bath time is the most fun ever. So <laughs> like two weeks ago, we realized she was such a peanut in that bathtub originally, and now she's overflowing out of it. It's so cute. So, um, Yeah, I really love bath time. She's so happy in there and her eyes are so big and she's just like, oh, this feels familiar. I love this. And and so I really love that. And I love putting her in her little bath towel with the little, you know, puppy ears and, you know, drying her off and swaddling her. And um, so I really love that. I think that's, uh, that's definitely, other than my first moments with her where, you know, she came out. Um, we do have some videos I want to share with you guys. So the first one I'm going to show you guys is, um, us in Milwaukee. So we were at a Marriott, as you guys know, Marriott's been a big sponsor of the show. Um, we are at a Marriott in Milwaukee and we had been there almost two weeks at this point and we were getting restaurant fatigue. (laughs) And so we would go out to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Then we'd have wine. We were just roaming the streets of Milwaukee. I went to the dry bar there three times thinking, okay, today's going to be the day. And then it wouldn't happen. I'm like, I need a blowout. I need a fresh blowout for these baby All pictures. All I kept saying is don't rush this. <laughs> Just enjoy this time with your dad and in this the, this new city. And Just so that was really relax. cool. To me, that was like one of the most special things ever was that time with my dad. Yeah. That was totally just us. Yep. Um, it was so, so great. And we were just having such a good time because the other time I had with him like that was recovering from surgery. So those were rough moments. This was joyous and anticipation and excitement. And so we had so much fun, but, 
um, we had to switch it up this morning. So we'll show you this quick video. Okay, Baby Watch 2023 continues. What? Now we're in Dad's suite and he's cooking. What'd you make, Dad? Well, I'm making uh, the bacon now. I think the egg is We decided to start making breakfast at the hotel. So I've got my favorite eggs. I got my salad. Kevin's got his. A little bacon. A little bit of bacon. <laughs> Hopefully this and soon. Oh, maybe that's Kevin. Oh, welcome to breakfast, sir. Wow, well, this is very nice. I see we have reservations. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Um, so my dad's breakfasts are amazing. So then we told the surrogate, well, tomorrow morning, now that you're staying at the hotel, we're going to give you guys all breakfast. We raced. We had like three minutes left in the supermarket after dinner. We all raced. Our kids were all rushing and grabbing, you know, ingredients and things. Never had the breakfast because she had the baby instead. But they did get breakfast when they came to L.A. So I video diary everything, by the way. I have so many more of these. I won't bore you, but there is one more as uh we know it's actually happening and we're we're ready to roll soon okay time check 6 24 a.m uh she got her epidural maybe like 40 minutes ago baby's doing great heartbeat's great i set up my ipad to film and uh and we're just getting ready for life to change um had a really great conversation with the surrogate last night. It was just us in our hotel living room at the Residence Marriott Inn and a uh, Residence Marriott. And I was just telling her how, <clears throat> you know, excited I am and how, um, though I felt impatient, it's really just because I'm so excited to meet her and I'm so excited for life to change and the way it's going to change. And the meaning and the purpose that life is going to have and take after this and she was like well you'll never forget like the day before and I said I know that feeling but in a different way I know what it's like to look back because I do it often I'll look back at the day before my mom was diagnosed with brain cancer I'll never forget it I was wearing these um, big pink pants with like this kind of red top or maybe it might have been the opposite but um I was happy on set at E! News and life changed completely that innocence was like lost and then same thing with the brain tumor and then the pancreas tumor my mom passing there have been so many of these moments and so why I'm so excited about this is this is going to be another one of those moments where you remember the day before and what you did, but for really joyous reasons and really exciting and happiness. And so I'm really excited for to have that experience of, wow, we had a beautiful dinner with our surrogate and her family the night before. I spent time at the container store trying to get organized. <laughs> Uh, my dad made us a really beautiful breakfast in the morning in the hotel and that was my day before and now I'm about to be a mom and I'm just so excited so we are gearing up she delivers fast so this is gonna go very quickly they think no one has any of these videos no one's showed any of these so I feel like it would be nice to share with you guys in the Heel Squad. So Nat's like dying in the studio. Um, okay, two questions just came in. Yes, honey. One, when will she begin to watch wrestling? Uh, immediately. Okay. Yep. Now, second question mm -hmm. is... Um, These are obviously fake questions. Are, they're not fake <laughs> questions. People want to know. Um, will, uh, will she be allowed to celebrate Christmas? Yes, honey. She's going to celebrate Christmas. Okay. Just curious. So anyhow, um, that was a little bit of the journey. It was uh, it was a fun wait in Milwaukee. The, uh, the wait was worth it. I just kept saying, pump the brakes. It's, can we have a whole life. Just breathe. Enjoy this time. By the way, is yes, Christmas Day is fun. But, but it's not Christmas week yeah. even more fun? 
Natasha, yeah. even you from all the way in the booth in South Africa. <laughs> is yeah. Christmas Day more fun or the week in the South Africa? The anticipation is right. so fun. Yeah. I am dying for the holidays this year. I cannot wait. Our house that flooded in Connecticut hopefully will be done. And then we'll be able to be home for the holidays. And then... Piece of cake. Um, <laughs> yep. Kevin's just all over everything. <laughs> And so I'm really looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to taking her to the pumpkin patch. Oh, I'm also and being reminded by Steve the Steamer that SummerSlam is next weekend. Just saying. Oh, SummerSlam next weekend. So, yeah, we can just have our first, yeah. Well, wait, we can't travel. That's, where is it? It can't be live. The, the noise would be a little I think intrusive. It's a little loud, but I'm yeah. thinking, you know, we can, you know. We'll figure out. We can watch it on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll watch Auntie Daria. Um, you have to watch Auntie Daria hang on to that gold, baby. Yep, yep. So, friends, um, thank you so much for being with us here today live. Wait, have you thank heard you from any questions? Sl- thank can you I ask for you this? Love. We have more questions. Um, someone's Wait. interrupting me. I don't know Wait. who it is the that's just Caesar? interrupting me. Uh, honey, I'm sorry. I'm just speaking for the fans. Honey, you just came off of a clip of your little peanut being born, and you went right into, is she going to get to watch wrestling? Is she going to get to do this? Um, da, 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 da. Am I not in the chair, the question chair? This is the <laughs> chair where we... Okay. <laughs> okay? What celebrities have reached out to say, wish you and the baby well? Can you say? Kim Kardashian, Vin Diesel, Wilmer Valderrama, Sonia Deville, um, I'm sure 50,000 John Taffer, um, um, Michael Chiklis, Melina Canacredis, Stephanie McMahon, Vin, um, uh, the Chiklis family, Canacredis family. Who else? The Stallone family. The Stallone family. The Stearns. The Stearns. Yep. Howard Stern. Mercedes uh, Vernado. Mercedes Vernado. You're asking me to use my brain right now. I know. I'm sure. I feel bad. I hope we're not leaving anyone out. Yeah, I know we lot, for sure are. Well, you, a lot of people did, and I think it's just nice. Yeah. It's nice. Oh, yeah. who were you with last night? You were with... Oh, Olivia Culpo. Yeah. Auntie Olivia. Auntie Olivia reached mm-hmm. out. Yeah. Lots of people. Anyway. Um, any final questions before we go, friends? And also want to know, people are asking, would we want to have another, another baby? And how soon? Um... I would love to have another one. Uh, I think in the beginning I was like so happy. I'm like, I want 50 more. Now I'm like settling in and I'm like, ooh, one is great because we really love traveling and we love moving around and moving around with one is going to be a lot easier than moving around with two. But I do see the need for her to have a sibling to play with because we are pretty busy people. So it would be nice for her to have a sibling to play with. And it would be nice for her to have a sibling that will love her and, and, you know, they'll love each other. So if we're gone someday, they have each other. So yeah, I I'm think, concerned. Yeah. Again. I think it's, I think right now it's probably a really good chance we're going to do this again. 50, 50 more, more than 50, 50. I think it's like 90, 10. And then how soon? I mean, it'd have to happen soon. As we say in Boston. Wicked happen, fast. No, shortly. Shortly. Yeah. It would have to happen shortly. Okay. Mm-hmm. Gender reveal yet or no? No, honey. All right, just say. Wh- I'm on asking on behalf of the fans. <laughs> Same surrogate or a new one? I don't know. We have to see. We have a lot of things to work on if we're going to do this. But she's only five weeks old. Give me a second. Well, okay. all right. <laughs> you put scoop in the corner here. I'm here to get the answers. I can't. You're so funny. And someone else reached out. And we, of course, want to shout out to Mark and Kelly R- Ripa. Oh, yeah. And, and Mark and Kelly, yeah. And this giant basket. The of- most massive basket of gifts ever. So. So crazy. Anyway, thank you guys for all the love. Thank you for the support. Um, thank you for the well wishes. And, um, you know, keep listening to these all-star episodes and keep getting better and uh, we'll be back with more episodes very soon as well. And in the meantime, be nice people, make good choices, and be present. This podcast and all related content published or distributed by or on behalf of Maria Menunos or mariamenunos.com is for informational purposes only and may include information that is general in nature and that is not specific to you.
Any information or opinions expressed or contained herein are not intended to serve as or replace medical advice, nor to diagnose, prescribe, or treat any disease, condition, illness, or injury, and you should consult the healthcare professional of your choice regarding all matters concerning your health, including before beginning any exercise, weight loss, or healthcare program. If you have or suspect you may have a healthcare emergency, please contact a qualified healthcare professional for treatment. Any information or opinions provided by a guest expert or host featured within website or on company's podcast are their own, not those of Maria Menounos or the company. Accordingly, Maria Menounos and the company cannot be responsible for any results or consequences or actions you may take based on information or opinions.